I'm having so much fun with these little tone uh, comparisons with these guitars and this uh, little Supra Comet uh, six watt amp that I, a little 110 speaker in it that I found up in Memphis the first week of February, 2018. And I did a little sound uh, tone comparison uh, with uh, using my gold top on an old ZZ Top song off for a second record called uh, uh, Down Browning. And uh, I did it with this gold top and I, I came closer with it than I could with anything else. But uh, I came across that guitar up in uh, Memphis years ago and uh, oddly, I believe it was Billy Gibbons who suggested these Jeff Beck antiquities. I, was gonna, I had two guitars to work with. And I didn't want to put the same thing in each one. So naturally, he's going to um, recommend Pearly Gates pickups by Seymour Duncan. And those are the Pearly Gates pickups in my Pearly Gates copy. But we put the Jeff Beck Antiquities in uh, this old gold top. But, uh, so that was used on uh, down Brownie Tone Test. Now, the one I just did is uh, called Brown Sugar. It's off the first record. That was the one that sort of established Billy as a guitar player. And, and this guitar here has got an interesting story. Uh, it was made in the late 70s or early 80s. It came from Strings and Things in Memphis, and they were trying to duplicate uh, the old 1959 Les Pauls, the, the standard. You know, the, they were the call standard, but they were just the classic you know, rock and roll guitar. I believe they were making these things up in Memphis. I'm not sure, but it seemed like they were. But wherever they were making them, um, Strings and Things, which was uh, a music store in Memphis on Union Avenue, it's long gone now. Uh, they were sort of a big player uh, in the game there in those days. They were pretty big, and they, you know, Gibbons and Jeff Beck and the Leonard Skinner guys and all that crowd, they were in and out up there all the time. They did a lot of work for them. So um, they decided to do these remakes, Gibson did. And I, I guess it was the fir first ones I ever remember. And I remember how surprised I was that they were actually going to try to do that. And uh, today, of course, every time you turn around, they got a you know a reissue of this amplifiers, guitars, and this model, that model. I mean, it, it just they've just diluted it so much now that it's lost a lot of its its uh, its, its 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 uniqueness. But this one came in, and all these guitars they were un I mean, let's just say unpainted, and they got them. Strings and Things was the only company, or either the first company in America that got them. I think they were the only ones. I think they sort of did the test there in Memphis. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, they got 11 of them in, and Chris Lovell, who was the one of the owners, he and Charlie uh, uh, owned Strings and Things. And so uh, they, uh, Chris called me one day and said, hey, man, um, you know, Gibson's is, Gibson is doing this, and they uh, they picked us as one of the uh, test markets or one of the, the ones to send to. And, uh, uh, you know, come on up and have a look at them because, you know, you're really going to like these. So I made the drive up to Memphis and they had them all there in the back room and uh, they were all unpainted, just, you know, raw wood. And we went through every one of them. There's two of them I like. There was another one and it was a, had a little fatter, chunkier neck, but the, the old tops got that. So I, and I really liked that guitar better and I can't remember why. Um, I just liked it better. And, and uh, uh, but this one had, uh, was a prettier color. It's got that, you know, almost that book matched, uh, stuff there, and it's just a really pretty guitar. Looks a lot like Pearly Gates. And uh, uh, so we were gonna go for that. We were gonna go for that look. And uh, so I picked this guitar, it has a thinner neck. It's a, it's a, a little bit brighter tone. So uh, after deliberation and going through all of them, uh, you know, you kind of glance at them and you know, you eliminate over half of them immediately. I was down to two or three, and then just down to those two. And it went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So anyway, I picked this one. And when it was all said and done, Chris Lovell, uh, again, one of the owners, said, well, come up back up here in my office. I want to show you something. And uh, <clears throat> you ladies will have to forgive me, but this was back in the days when, you know, the, you know that, that movie uh, called Ten with Bo Derrick, you know, they would rate women, you know, she's a seven, she's a nine, she's a ten. Well, Chris had gone through here and rated all the guitars on his scale of one to ten. And he said, read me uh, the serial number. He knew the guitar. He said, read me that serial number. And I did. And he handed me a piece of paper. He said, look at here. Look what I put beside it. And there was some sevens and eights. And there's a couple of tens. This one was an 11. This one was the star of the show. And I was so proud that uh, he and I saw it the same way. 
and that of the first batch, arguably the first batch of remakes that Gibson ever did, I got the, the, the 11 out of the batch, the, the 11 on a scale of 10. So it's a really neat little guitar, and I tried the gold top on this down brownie, and it just it didn't give me the tone I wanted, and so I thought, okay, let's try the pearly gates look alike. So uh, that's it, and here's what I did. I've got Dan Brownie, and I don't really match him lick for lick on this one. I'm trying to get the tone right. And on the vinyl, the original record, the, the good one is the vinyl. It's the one that was done, uh, it was, it's off the first record. Uh, it was Easy Top's first record is what it's called. I think Bill Ham, I mean, uh, um, I see Frank Jaubert, uh, he did the photography, and I think Bill Nair maybe did the album cover. But anyway, it's, it's a classic. Now, this is brown sugar, and I'm trying to match the tone using the Supra. Uh, the volume is wide open. Uh, the tone is, I think, on 80%. And um, and I count it off, and then Gibbon starts it, and I kind of fall, fall in and try to follow him. So I, I won't be hitting it lick for lick. You'll hear me be off quite a bit, but this is just for tone. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So there's the brown sugar tone test, and uh, it's not exact, and uh, and I miss a bunch of notes, but it's close and it's fun to do, and uh, I just do this, um, uh, you know, I've got an engineer friend, and he said that with these young guitar bands that come through, the one thing they request the most, they come in and all this high, uh, you know, high gain stuff they do and all this you know, this, you know, big, bad shredding and, and all that stuff. It's just degenerated almost into just a bunch of messy white noise. Uh, and they come in here with all this crazy stuff and it sounds good to their ear when they're practicing, but when on the, on the playback, it doesn't. And the most requested thing he said he gets from these young guitar bands is, can you take some of that distortion off? And if you will go and listen to some of these old records, Dwayne Allman, Billy Gibbons, Tori Caldwell, you know, uh, Ed King and all the Leonard Skinner guys. I mean, that stuff is not as, as, uh, as high gainy as it you, you, you think when you listen to it. And, and this here of uh, uh, Billy doing this song, they used, uh, um, you know, it's Marshalls, but it's almost like he's using the Fender bass, but it's just almost a clear, I mean, a little cleaner tone. On the other hand, Kenny Greenberg, a Nashville session player who knows Gibbons had kind of copy him as well as anybody. Uh, he said that he heard this, I think it was a hundred watt Marshall. And the interview's on YouTube, you can look it up. And he said it sounded so much like Brown Sugar and Billy Gibbons that he had to have it. To me, it sounds a little bit more like a Fender Bassman. But anyway, you will be surprised at how much distortion you don't need if you want to sound like the real guy. So uh, that's it. And uh, that's uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> the uh, 
brown sugar with the uh, comet, uh, the Supro Comet. And uh, again, this is my iMac with the uh, using Logic Pro X. And there's uh, the gold top that I call honey because of the color. And here's the uh, uh, the sunburst copy um, that I call Trudy Light. So it's Trudy Light or True Delight. So anyway, that's the story on that. And these are the guitars used. And um, the one that matched up a little bit better was the, the thinner neck and a little bit brighter tone. I'm bad to, to muffle and uh, with my right palm, kind of palm it. And Gibbons is not definitely not doing that on the record. So I've got to get my palm off of it, the strings more to make it even closer. But um, anyway, that's the, that's the tone test comparison for now. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, good luck with it and see you next time around.